Hey, welcome back to EMP Cycle Works. Thank you for joining me for the third installment of this 131 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 build that we're taking care of here. In this episode, we're going to install the cam chest and the push rods. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So, we start off by bleeding the lifters with our fueling oil can here. The object is to get as much oil into the lifter as possible while removing as much air as possible. And once I do that, once oil starts coming out of the top of the lifter, I'll put it in a vat of oil just so no more air can get in and hopefully, like we'll let gravity bleed out some of that air. Very important for initial startup. Now as usual, I'm going to clean the gasket surfaces with my maroon scotch Bright. This motor only had like 400 miles on it when we started, so it's pretty clean, but I'm just double checking and making sure it is perfectly clean. And then we want to make sure we get all the scotch Bright out of the motor. We don't want any of it left in there. Now we're going to get rid of the OEM inner cam bearing that's in there, and we do that by first installing the removal tool into the bearing, then the rod that goes through the removal tool. Now we install the plate for the tool, making sure that we line up the bolt holes into the cam, you know, the cam cover bolt holes. And then we use our thumb screws to secure the plate to the motor. And there's four of them. Once those are finger tight, we can install the washer and then the nut onto the tool. I'm going to use a 916 ratcheting wrench and an adjustable wrench on the the nut. And what I'm going to do is start the start tightening the the bolt. Once that's nice and tight, then I will hold it and then tighten the, the nut. And as you tighten the nut, if all goes well, the bearing will come out as this thing gets pulled towards the plate. Now you want to go slowly here and make sure that the bearing is coming out smoothly. You don't want the bearing to break apart. So it's very important that you go slowly and make sure that everything feels good and double check your work often here. This is crucial. And once the bearing's free, the tool will relax. And then I'm going to stick a microfiber rag on the pinion just to protect it from this big heavy tool. I don't want, in case I drop it, I don't want to hit that pinion shaft. Or I want the pinion shaft to be protected as possible. And that's the old bearing. Now it's time to install the new bearing. So these new bearings have writing on one face of them, and that's the face that you press into. That face has more uh, reinforcement, or meat as you will, as to not deflect when you apply pressure to that side. So the tool gets threaded into the plate, and then the adapter goes on. And I use a little bit of WD-40 just as a lube, so try to prevent any galling. Now double check and make sure the bearing goes the right way on the tool and the holes line up on the plate to the cam cover bolts and then in install your thumb screws. Now I'm going to hand tighten the tool until it just touches and then I'm going to double check and make sure that the bearing is going into the into the case nicely and as soon as it stops the bearing is in the tool has a shoulder on it that will install to the correct depth then I take my microfiber rag again protect the pinion shaft remove the tool and double check that the bearing is in and it's recessed in slightly into the case and we're good so now time to install the two o-rings the oil pump and the cam plate o-ring and i use assembly lube because it's a little bit sticky here that way the bear, the oil o-rings will stay in the case and they won't fall out now some people put the o the oil pump o-ring on the oil pump i like putting it in the case it, it's easier for me to tell if the oil pump goes in correct, properly and this is the factory oem oil pump so we're going to Use engine oil on the rotors. 
in the pump body and we're going to make sure that rotor gets installed completely and the o-ring or the seal on the back of the oil pump is installed and we try to clock the oil pump gears to the pinion shaft so we can put this on easier and in order to hold the backing plate I usually stick two screws through the oil pump body under the backing plate that way it keeps everything together as we install this or it keeps everything lined up I should say and then once the oil pump and the pinion are lined up we can push the oil pump into the o-ring and it should snap in and be fairly fairly snug when it's in. It shouldn't be hard to get that in there at all. So now we use engine oil, kind of fill up the oil pump as much as we can. Lube up the outer rotor here with engine oil. Install it into the pump. Now these newer oil pumps after 2020, I believe, or maybe 2019, are upgraded and more than sufficient enough to handle the oiling needs of these Milwaukee 8s. So assembly lube on the brand new bearing. And then we're going to use assembly lube on our cleaned camshaft. Now this is Maxell M837B cam, and you can see it's the lift and the duration are much greater than the stock camshaft and then the camshaft gets assembly lube all over it and then we're going to install it into the bearing and then I usually spin it around a little bit just to make sure it feels feels good remove our two screws that we use to index the oil pump together and then we're going to get a bunch of lube on the cam plate itself here. Use assembly lube where the new cam goes and engine oil, just really oil, ton of oil on it. That way nothing runs dry when we first start it up. Get the cam plate indexed into the locating dowel and the cam. Make sure the cam spins freely here and you kind of got to pull it towards the cam plate. Then install the cam sprocket spacer and blue Loctite on all the bolts here and I'm going to install all the bolts into their holes and just hand start them with my Allen wrench. And the bike is in sixth gear with the spark plugs out so I can spin the motor over using the rear wheel. And it's very important to align the oil pump to the cam plate and the pinion shaft. So hand tighten all the bolts, or not even hand tighten, just start them. And I'm going to spin the motor over a couple times using the rear wheel and then hand tight all the cam plate bolts just till they touch spin the wheel again and then I'm going to torque all the cam plate bolts to 120 inch pounds So it's a crisscross pattern. Spin the wheel again. And then we're going to hand tighten all the oil pump bolts. And that's a crisscross pattern as well. And we're just going to just barely bottom them. Spin the rear wheel again. And I, I torque these to 60 inch pounds spin the wheel again and then final torque to 120 inch pounds and just a reminder there's blue loctite in all these bolts you don't want to go crazy with the loctite especially on the oil pump bolts because it will 
the oil, the Loctite will back out and, and mess up with your clearances and possibly get into the oil pump, and you don't want that. But I like to have them secure. So I'll spin the wheel again, make sure there's no binding. Now we have to check our alignment between the, the pinion gear and the cam gear. And we do that by using a straight edge across them and a feeler gauge. So I'm going to line up the timing marks. I have my little locking tool that locks the two cam gears together so I can get 25 foot-pounds of torque on the pinion and the um, cam gear. Torqued, and then pull out my lock. And I'm going to take my straight edge and my feeler gauge. I'll use an 8 thousandths feeler gauge. If it goes in, then I'll go up to a different, another size. But the cam spacers are in 10 thousandths increments. So you don't have to go too crazy every 1 thousandths feel. And if it's more than 8, then we need to put a bigger shim in it. But I'll try 18 thousandths. If it's more than that, then we need to go up again. But this one just so happened to be there was a 110 in it to begin with. And a 120, 120,000 shim is what this called for. So same process again. Once we get that shim in, we double check just to make sure that our original measurements were right on. And, and 8,000 field gauge will not go in, so we are golden. Now time to put these on for the last time here. We put the chain on the cam sprocket and the pinion sprocket. And, then tr and line up the, the dots. And then once those are lined up, we install them on the pinion and on the camshaft. Use red Loctite on these bolts just to drop. And because we're using the chain now, I can use the bike still being in six gear and the brake rear brake to lock the motor. And we're going to do 25 foot-pounds on both of these and I back them off one complete turn and then do a final torque of 25 on the pinion and 35 on the cam sprocket. Next up, more lube. Engine oil on the, the chain and a little bit in the lifter bores just for good measure. Blue Loctite on the tensioner bolts just to drop and install those and those bolts get torqued to 120 inch pounds. Pretty much any quarter 20 bolt on a Harley gets 120 inch pounds. Um, but consult your service manual just to make sure and then just for good measure, I'm going to put some assembly lube on, on this stuff, even though it's all, you know, got 400 miles on it. But And then final time, I'm going to spin the wheel over just to double check and make sure I don't have any binding. And then blue Loctite goes on the cam cover bolts. And then I use two bolts to kind of hold the gasket in place through the cam cover like that and then get those started and then finish putting the rest of the bolts in and I torque them all to 120 inch pounds in a crisscross pattern and then I uh, I recorded or I edited the end of this where I go all the way around just to make sure that that they're good and then I pull my lifters out of the oil bath and on Milwaukee 8, the oiling holes face each other. So the intake lifter faces out and the exhaust faces in. And then I'm going to install my SNS lifter blocks here. I like using these lifter blocks just for valve train stability. The plastic ones, I don't know that they flex, but you know, these are like 50 bucks. It's a little bit of peace of mind. Blue Loctite on the fasteners, and I stick a feeler gauge in between the lifter and the lifter cuff here. Uh, what I want, what I'm trying to do is 
center the lifter in the cuff as much as I can. And that just limits any binding or any abnormal wear. And then once the push rod or once the feeler gauge goes in both sides, torque this bolts to 120 inch pounds. And they don't move a lot, but there is some play in there, so it's sometimes it's, it, it's a pain to get it done. But once you get it done, spin the wheel, and what I'm looking for is these lifters to go up and down and not hang up. Once they do that, then I know the lifter cuffs are installed properly and we're good. Now we're going to install our lifter covers with the gaskets first, blue locked on the fasteners, and 120 inch pounds. Now I've used the M837B cam a bunch of times with these pistons, so I know that the piston to valve clearance is, isn't anywhere close to being an issue. So that's why I don't have to check them. I mean, it's over, it's over 200 thousandths. But if you're using an unknown cam, it's definitely recommended that you clay the engine, or a cam and piston combination, that you clay the engine. Next up our O-rings, make sure you get your O-rings in the head, brand new O-rings and the ones that were in there were removed. Then O-rings on the lifter blocks. And we're using SNS quickie push rods on this. And first thing we do is look through them and make sure there's no obstructions and then blow air through them. And then we reuse the spring and the washer and a brand new O-ring. And install the lifters. Or push rods, excuse me. Now I'm going to jump to another day where I install the lifters and show you how to adjust them. Um, this one I didn't get a very good uh, video of it. The first step is to put my finger on the intake and roll the rear wheel. And when I'm looking for the intake lifter to move up and then down. Once it moves down, that's top dead center or approaching top dead center. And now uh, we can adjust our push rods. So here's the next. Here's that next scene. So I'm going to expand the push rod all the way that I can using my fingers until it, there's no more up and down movement. And this is known as zero lash. And once we're at zero lash, then we need to move, we need to turn the push rod four complete turns. So on these SNS push rods, there's four flats on the, the lower push rod, the one that moves, so I'm just going to move that 16 times. So there's four sides, four times four is 16. And then, so this is a better look at it. And it's very crucial, you want the push rod in the middle of the lifter travel. And that way the hydraulic lifter can do what it's supposed to do. cushion the valve train and then I close the nut up the lock nut and then I use kind of like a scissor motion to tighten these things and you'll see that here what that does is allow me to get a pretty good amount of torque and it it makes it really hard for the the lift the uh, wrenches to slip off if I was trying to do this with two hands you know you'll slip off and round the round the around the nut and that's that's a bad day when that happens especially on a push rod now this is kind of interesting here's the dynograph of this bike and I ended up trying three different exhausts to try to find out what the best combination was here the green line is the Bassani two into one the blue line is the fuel moto riot RTX two into one shorty and the red line is the chromeworks dominator and as you can see right at the beginning it makes a whole bunch more power throughout the whole range, but especially down low at about 2,000 RPMs. There's a hu huge difference there. Um, and that pipe is a two into two with a crossover, and it makes more power than both these different two into ones, for whatever that's worth. But anyways, thank you for joining me here at EMP Cycle Works. I hope you enjoyed this build, and I uh, look forward to making the next one for you guys. Thank you very much.